City Day, Part 2. Disciple, but didn't you say that some things were getting supramentalized in parts? Sri Aurobindo, getting supramentalized is one thing, and the achieved supramental is another. Disciple, you have unnerved a lot of people by that statement, that you haven't achieved the supermind. Sri Aurobindo, good Lord, and what do these people think I meant when I was saying persistently that I was trying to get the supermind down into the material? If I had achieved it on November 24th, 1926, it would have been there already for the last nine years, isn't it? Disciple, X seems to have declared that on that day you had conquered sleep, food, disease, and death. On what authority did she proclaim it then? Sri Aurobindo. I am not aware of this gorgeous proclamation. What was said was that the divine Krishna or the divine presence or whatever you like, had come down into the material. It was also proclaimed that I was retiring, obviously to work things out. If all that was achieved on the 24th, November 1926, what on earth remained to work out? And if the supermental was there, for what blazing purpose did I need to retire? Besides, are these things achieved in a single day? If X said anything like that, she must have been in a prophetic mood and seen the future in the present. I have stood, but I have not delivered. I had time for standing a moment, but none for a delivery. However pregnant my mind, or my overmind may be. But really, what a logic. One must become thoroughly supermental first, achieve supermind, and then only one can begin to know something about supermind? From Nolini's Collected Works, Volume 8. Even before that date, for some time past, Sri Aurobindo had been more and more withdrawing into himself and retiring within. An external sign of this became visible to us as his lunch hour shifted gradually towards the afternoon. We used to have our meal together and the mother too ate with us at the library house in the room now used by Ravindra as the fruit room. There used to be about eight or ten of us. On the previous day, Sri Aurobindo came down to lunch when it was past four. We would naturally wait until he came. Then the great day arrived. In the afternoon, it was in fact already getting dark. All of us had gone out as usual. I was on the seafront. Suddenly, someone came running at full speed and said to me, Go get back at once. The mother is calling everybody. I had not the least idea as to what might be the reason. I came back running and went straight up to the veranda facing the prosperity room. Sri Aurobindo used to take his seat there in the evening for his talks with us or rather for answering our questions. As I came up, a strange scene met my eyes. Sri Aurobindo was seated in his chair. The mother sat at his feet, both of them with their faces turned towards us. I looked round to see if all were present. Satyan was missing 
And I said, Satyan has not come. Shall I call him in? The mother spoke out. Yes, all, all. All were called in. Everybody was now present. We took our seats before Sri Aurobindo and the mother, both of whom were facing us. The whole scene and atmosphere had a heavenly halo. Sri Aurobindo held his left hand above the mother's head, and his right hand was extended to us in benediction. Everything was silent and still, grave and expectant. We stood up one by one and went and bowed at the feet of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. After a while, both of them went inside. And then Dutta, who had been among us, suddenly exclaimed at the top of her voice, as though an inspired prophetess of the old mysteries, The Lord has descended. He has conquered death and sorrow. He has brought down immortality. from Champaklal. Dutta spoke, Krishna the Lord has come. He has ended the hell of suffering. He has conquered pain. He has conquered death. He has conquered all. He has descended tonight, bringing immortality and bliss. As each one made pranam to the mother, and she gave her blessing, Sri Aurobindo held his palm above hers in blessing. I was the only person to do pranam to both. It was a spontaneous movement. Something in me rushed out and made me do it. From Nirodbaran. Question. Please, could you tell us something about the 24th of November 1926? What exactly happened on that day? And why is it called the Day of Realization or the Victory Day? Sri Aurobindo. The mother and I were actively trying to bring down the power of a greater consciousness. I had already had an inkling that such a consciousness existed. I established contact with it and, drawn by the force of an intense spiritual effort, that consciousness began to descend. From the beginning of November, or even earlier, the Sadaks were aware of an impending event of great importance. And even the atmosphere of the ashram changed. All of them felt a great peace, and some even experienced this new descent to some extent. Our daily evening talks began later and later every day. From four in the afternoon, when it usually used to start, it now became as late as nine o'clock or ten at night. They would sit waiting for me all the while. 